All right, so in this video we're gonna do is colorize a black and white photo. So very first thing we always do is we duplicate the layer. Uh, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna uh, duplicate this layer. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just going to basically fix it in general because it's just some stuff I'm not a big fan of. So I'm gonna go to this, do the polygonal lasso. And I'm gonna go boom, 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 and double click. And I'm just going to go to Edit, Content Aware Fill, and I'm just going to go hit OK, and that will that'll get rid of that, which doesn't look that great. And that should Control D, and I'm going to do the same thing. Click Backspace and Control D, and then I'm just going to do the same thing here. I don't know how well it's going to do against her shirt, so we'll see. All right, and I went up too high. It was well, I'm just going to cut that. So I'm just going to hold Alt as I do my cutting. And I am going to cut out. I wasn't really thinking this through. Double click. Okay, so now I got that. So I'm going to try the same thing again. Content Aware Fill. And let's see if this will, how well this does it. it should give me a preview. So you see it's sort of messed up on her shirt. I'm just going to go ahead and do it because it didn't mess her shirt up. And then um, backspace and D, and then I'm just going to go ahead and use um, the healing brush and I'll just sample an area over here let's say let's make this a bit smaller I'm going to hold alt to click over here and I'm just going to kind of pitter patter this area Maybe brush in a little oh, like that there and let's sample over here over here. Uh, imagine I did a good job. I don't really want to waste a bunch of time on this because this is just minor stuff. You know, uh, obviously this boot up here isn't like that big of a deal, but it would look. Uh, it's just it's creating a focal point that was rather that I would rather was not there. So I might go through and like maybe even remove that chair and this and things like that, you know. Maybe even, it sounds stupid, but maybe even this tuft of grass just because it's sort of annoying, okay. Imagine I did a good job. I don't want to spend a bunch of time on it, but you can kind of see. So make any kind of fixes to the image you would want to do initially. Now, if you remember in the beginning, I said we were going to do a black and white image. And you might be looking at this and be like, well, this is already colored. And that would be a very true statement. So we need a... Um, if you have a black and white photo, maybe even use your restored image if you want to from the assignment number two, the image restoration. Uh, that might be a black and white photo. Or if you have a black and white photo, maybe something of your grandma or grandpa or whatever. Um, you can go ahead and just colorize that image. Uh, but if you don't have one, which is possibly likely, you could just take a picture and then just make it black and white and then um, colorize that. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do here just so that you get kind of the idea. So, um, no, so that'd be the first thing I do. I make the duplicate, I fix the picture. I'm gonna go ahead and crop it next. Um, and then we're gonna do the black and white thing, sorry. Uh, so I'm gonna do width height resolution. So the crop tool, width height resolution, uh, nine by six or six by nine, depends how you wanna do it. Uh, and I'm gonna decide how I want to crop this. And obviously she's my focal point. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure it's just her. So you see I healed things I didn't even need to. Should've done this first before I bothered editing it. Okay, so this ain't the highest quality photo, but I'm not the highest quality photographer. All right, so now we're gonna make a black and white. Now I could just do an adjustment layer. There's a black and white right here, um, but I actually want to permanently make the image black and white. I don't want it to just be a filter that's lying on top of it or, or an adjustment layer. So I'm just gonna go to image adjustment and do the black and white. Okay, there is desaturate, which will actually just take the color out, but you, you make no choices about how the image is converted. If you do the black and white, it actually gives you these sliders. And basically, you're saying, these reds, how do I want them represented? Like, are they going to be brighter or darker? So red generally is going to make the skin color brighter. So notice when I bring it up, it makes her skin much brighter. And if I go lower, it's going to make it much darker. Her pants were pink, so that's obviously going to show up a bit too. So probably want her skin to be a little bit lighter, right? Because I want her to stand out. So let's pull that up a little bit. And then I would just suggest wiggle waggle in it and seeing what gets affected and kind of go from there. So I'm going to actually pull the yellows down a little bit. Green is obviously going to affect the grass a whole ton. So um, we'll put that, kind of want that roughly where it was. This is going to affect her shirt quite a bit. Let's see. We'll 
we'll just I'll leave that there. Blues. Again, it's affecting her shirt and a little bit of her hair from the um, reflection of the sky. So like that. Magentas. And that's again going to be affected by her pants. Let's just make them a little bit darker so, so there's more contrast there. Um, and that's good. So we'll just hit OK. Boom. Now, that is a black and white picture. So it's officially black and white. Now, from here, we can actually start doing a coloring. Okay. Now, there's a bunch of different ways to go about doing this. Um, I'm just going to show you kind of the most basic. So what we're going to do is we're just going to um, use the uh, layer um, blending modes here. And that's how we're going to do it. Okay. So we'll make a new layer. And what I would suggest is basically just doing one color on each layer. And then afterwards, you can go through and um, uh, adjust them, right? So, because some of this is not going to be perfect. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and paint her shirt with like some sort of this color, right? So, I'm just going to use my paintbrush here and I'll make sure the flow is 100%. And uh, I don't really need pressure sensitivity. And I'm just going to go ahead and use a hard brush, okay? So make sure we also don't need that. So make sure it's like 100%, 100%, and I'm not using any, if you're using a pen, I'm not using any pressure sensitivity. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just paint this shirt like so. And you're gonna look at it and be like, oh no, I can't see the thing. And it doesn't need to be perfect because I'm gonna be painting other layers anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure the shirt is a little bit up here too. So I use the bracket keys to the right of P, okay. So, and then I'm just going to go ahead and brush this in here. Her hair is going to be annoying later. Okay. And I'll just brush that in like so. Just a little bit of her shirt here. Okay. Like that, right? Just a little bit here. You know, do a good job. Okay. So all I got to do to make this work is just take this and convert it to um, color. And now it's only showing the color information. Now a couple of things to note here. If I make this more or less saturated, right? So um, uh, if so, if I go over here, basically adding black or adding white to it isn't actually going to change it in any way. Um, like if I try to paint black onto this image. If you look, you can see over here, it did paint black, but black has no color information. And subsequently, if I do white, it also will do nothing. Okay, so it's only the color that it's taking, so you, you don't really have to worry um, too much about, uh, about that. Okay, so I'm just going to call that layer good. I'll do the next one. And then her pants were like a magenta, right, or something. I don't know. I think they were more, maybe they were a little bit more this color. Um, now maybe when I go to do this, what I'll do is instead of just straight up trying to, um, paint it, which you could do that too, if you want, maybe what I'll do is I will use the magnetic lasso and I'm just going to go like this around the image. Click there just to make sure that I knew I wanted to swap there, there, and then double click and undo. There you go. So now I have that selection and I'll just use my fill tool here and just paint in it instead. And again, just make sure it might make sense to do this beforehand that you switch it to that. I'm just going to hit control D to clear my selection. So that's another way. So you could use your selection tools and things in order to try and um, color things in as well. That might make some sense uh, for you. Okay. All right. So next what I'm going to do is make another layer and I will do um, I will do, uh, let's say, the background. Probably should have done that first, actually. It's a good idea to kind of work from the back to the front. Um, so let's just go ahead and paint the back. Now, should have done it earlier. Now, one of the advantages that we have that you can do if you want is you could do something like this. I could take my um, layer here. Um, Say we just turn all these off, right? So if you click and drag down, it'll turn all the eyeballs off. I can go here and then I can just use the eyedropper, although you shouldn't do this. Uh, and I can click and I'm just going to drag and find like what's the most mid green. 
and I can use that color. And now I'm just going to turn these all back on. When I go ahead and use my paintbrush, right? Um, it'll actually use the literal color that's on there and that will actually work a bit better. Okay, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and switch this to color. Now you can see it supersedes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it underneath so it's below the other ones. So it's a good idea to kind of layer it up and then um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do another layer, a little layer button. And um, you might wanna label these two. Um, I just want to make this a little bit more towards the blue spectrum, okay? And I'm just going to go ahead and paint this, okay? All right, like that. And again, we'll just make sure that it is indeed color, okay? And then we'll do the skin next, okay? And let's just go ahead and just um. Let's use magnetic lasso, and I'm just going to go ahead and do the legs here. Okay, so you can see I hit backspace just to make sure it's oops, grabbing where I want it to. It's not doing a very good job. Good. Put all the way across. Doop -a -doop -a -doop. Nope. That doesn't matter. It's black anyway. It's not going to affect anything good and then I'm gonna paint a roughish skin tone now this is the hardest one to do because um, it's really hard to tell just quite frankly because uh, you can see it just looks off and it's gonna look off anyway even if you do an amazingly perfect job um, let's try using um, the quick quick selection tool here so I'm hit control D to clear my selection and I'm just gonna kind of might have to actually click on the picture here. There we go. Um, so I have to be on the layer in order for it to work. I'm just going to see if I can get this to do what I want to. Okay. And we'll just. All right. A little bit more there. All right. Then I'm just going to go in here. Control plus to zoom in. I'm going to use the bracket keys to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to hold Alt so it cuts away. And I'm just going to see if I can get this to cut away a little bit from these areas. Okay. And obviously I want all that going. The idea is to try and make big sweeping um, changes uh, or selections, right, uh, with the automated stuff and then just you know, use the more and more micro tools as you kind of go. So I need to grab her face here. So we'll just go ahead. All right. And make sure where her shirt and her skin starts. And go with that. All right. Um, yeah, there we go. So that's not perfect. I'm just going to click. make sure I click back up on this layer. I'm going to hit G uh, for the paint uh, bucket tool and click in there. Control minus, I'm gonna hit control D. And then the last one is just gonna be this hair here. And this is obviously gonna be a little bit just pretty dark brown hair. Okay, and I'm just gonna manually paint that in there. So I'll just grab the brush again, make this smaller, and do the best I can. Now her hair is uh, terrible to work with, obviously. So, um, yeah, that's a good time. So I would suggest not doing this kind of hair or anything that has kind of like little strands or is frizzy or whatever in that sort of way. Okay, so we'll just go like that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and also make that color. Okay, so obviously not perfect, not even good. I'm gonna click back on this layer and I'm gonna go ahead and just, um, uh, let's see. Oh, see, it's not giving me, all right. Uh, let's 
this one. There we go. If you hold um, Alt and you click on the eyeball, it will invert and only show the one that you click on. So I'm going to go like that. I'm going to hit I for the eyedropper tool. Right? Click on this. And then I'm just going to go ahead and Alt and click on everything again. And that will bring everything back. And I'm just going to go ahead and with the brush, just sort of, um, yeah, sort of make sure I fix everything that I might have missed. So like your skin here. It's got some missing, oops, right there. Um, shouldn't be there, so I'm going to use the eraser. And just going to erase that back out so it's back to her shirt color. And just sort of micro manage um, some of that. So let's go back to B. Okay. Needs to be there. E for eraser. Just trying to clean up the lines here. Oops, went a little bit too close. The last one was no good. I don't call that good enough. Okay, using the eraser here just to try and fix it. All right, then B for brush again. So you'd want to go through and basically do that through everything, right? Um, and then I can take the hair and then use E for the eraser. And just make sure that, you know, I might just kind of stroke it up a little bit here so it's not quite so obvious. And then um, I need to grab that that um, color, so I'm going to hold Alt and click on this. It's going to show everything. I'm going to hit I for eyedropper. Click on it. I'm going to hold Alt and click on this. It's going to bring everything back. Hit B for the brush. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just try to micro transaction into this here okay so um, uh, E for eraser so you can see this is definitely cutting in too much there so where it does get a little bit hairy um, just kind of go back and forth between the eraser and the brush, and you might just need to um, kind of just, in a way, sort of um, buzz it out. You know, like it's not going to be, it's not going to be perfect. It's not much you can do about it. Okay, we'll say that that's good enough. Obviously, there's all sorts of issues in it, but we're just going to call that good for now. Now, you might be looking at it and being like, it looks terrible, and you would be right. Um, some of it doesn't bother me quite as much. So I, I've done main colors, so I, I'd probably go through in like her shirt here. I'd like fix that as well. Um, but that's obviously, uh, that's going to be a little bit, you know, I'd go through there and just manually paint it. That's not really, you get the idea with that. Um, <clears throat> but one of the reasons why I separate all these layers is that this actually gives me control over um, the way that they um, look, right? So let's say I'm like, okay, her shirt, I think, was actually a little bit more green. So I'm going to go to that layer, right? And then I can just go ahead and do like an adjustment layer. So let's do the hue saturation one here. And I can be like, okay, I want to shift that more towards the green, that color. Uh, make sure also I'm going to right click on it and create clipping mask. So it doesn't affect anything but that. But that will allow me to shift it more in that green direction. And now it's it looks more like that. Or if it's too bright, too much color, I can take this down, that'll bring it more back to gray, or I can try to do more, right? So that gives me a little bit more flexibility because I can control each um, layer in of itself. And then it might make sense to actually go ahead and, um, I like to do this just because I don't want to have a bunch of adjustment layers. I know this is destructive, but I'm going to right click and just go merge down, and that will merge that adjustment layer into that layer itself, and that way it's gone, but it's, it's still applied. It's the same thing as doing image adjustments, hue saturation, where are you at? But you at least have a little more flexibility. So if you wanted to wait till the end and that we can adjust everything together and then merge them or, or not, it's up to you. Um, but the skin's the, the biggest one that's an issue, right? So I'm looking at the skin, and this is the reason why we're actually, for this assignment, you have to do a human. Um, she's very, she looks like a Simpsons character, right? She's very yellow. So what I'm going to do is just the same thing. I just go to adjustments. Again, I'll just do the hue saturation and be like, okay, it's definitely got to go more towards... Um, the red, right? So she's definitely going to go a little more red as a base tone. And 
Uh, there's a lightness. So the lightness actually isn't going to do anything. Lightness and darkness is literally going to do the same thing as um, desaturating. Because if you're adding white or black to it, it's just going to... Oh, this... Hang on a second. I got to make sure I um, create the clipping mask. There we go. Um, it's literally just going to make it gray if you go in either direction. Because all you're doing is just adding white or black, so it doesn't do anything. Um, so I'm just going to use the saturation and bring that down a little bit. And that's a little bit more natural. doesn't look 100%. And then I would go through... I'm just going to go ahead and right-click and merge down on that layer. I would go through and adjust all my layers that way. Okay. Now, once you're done with that, what we need to do is add variation because everything so add any sort of micro like things like these details in here or if there's like shoelaces paint the shoelaces white you know or whatever color they are and kind of mix all the or if there's flowers or what have you do all those things okay um but then what you're also going to need to do is just generally add variation in the stuff itself so i'm going to grab like let's say this green here and then i'm going to take my opacity bring that way down here and I'm going to take my flow and bring that way down here. So opacity is the stroke. It's uh, is the strength of when you brush. Uh, let me turn all these off so you can see. And then we'll just add a new layer. And we're going to turn this guy off too. So if I were to brush with, let me get a brush here. There it is. So um, let's take. I got the. Oh, that was on the. Okay. Anyway. So let's say I take opacity and I bring it down. Right. Use my mouse here. And let's do red so it's really obvious. Come on. So if it's 24%, if I go like this, you notice as much as I'm stroking it, only does 24%. Now if I go like this and across, now that's 50% there, and it's you know 24% transparency here, right? So that's that's how it works. And it doesn't matter how much I draw the stroke. Now if I draw over a stroke I've already drawn, it will add to it, but that's it. Flow kind of works similarly. But instead, what it does, so let's do this also like 24%. Also, what it does is it will look like it's kind of doing the same. Um, but as you draw, it will do it more and more. Let's make the flow like a whole lot less so it's a little more obvious. As I draw, it'll add more and more and more and more and more. It's like the, it's like a flow of like if you had a ballpoint pen, right? You know, you get a ballpoint pen and... Sometimes they work crummy, and you have to keep drawing, stroke, 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 until it, you know, kind of bleeds out. Same idea. So they're kind of similar, but they're also kind of exactly not. Okay, so that's what that is. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn all these back on. All right. So uh, I'm just going to go ahead and take my opacity way down and my flow way down. Um, and then uh, it's good if you have a pen. I'm going to choose a brush, and I'm just going to go ahead and do a soft round brush. The only difference between these is that when you do the hard round, it's just the hardness being up or not. And basically, the edge will be feathered or not. So does it actually... Oh, I thought it previewed it. Okay. So basically, it'll make it um, either fuzzy or not fuzzy. And I want it fuzzy. Or, yeah, I want it fuzzy. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to um, choose like a whatever kind of a greenish color here. And for something like this back here behind right i can now just go like that um i'm gonna do this as well because i'm just trying to add general variation i'm gonna go to the brush tool here so uh, brushes and brush settings and um i'm gonna go ahead and do the color dynamics and i am going to do hue jitter four percent saturation five you just do them all five so what this is going to do, and we're going to do this in another one just so you get an idea. Let me turn all this off again and make a new layer. What this is going to do is this. Whatever color you choose, okay, so let's say I do this green here. If I draw a stroke with the green, it's going to look like that. Now watch. Let me do a hard brush because it will be a little bit more obvious. Uh, oops, color dynamics is off. Okay. Do you notice something? What it does is it basically will will re kind of within a spectrum within so my hue jitter so meaning that the the hue so like the greenness of it going to green to uh, going towards red or blue or yellow or 
cyan, I guess. Um, it will shift a little bit by 4%. Saturation is obviously that's the amount of color. So going as, you know, very saturated, like a pure color to kind of grayed out. And then brightness, obviously light to dark, the value. Um, and then purity, I'm not playing around with anyway. So what it does is it kind of naturally applies this this variation in it. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that on. And then we'll throw this out. And turn all these guys back on. I really like using this for like digital painting too. It's kind of a cheat. Uh, but it'll actually work really well for this. I'm going to put this back to fuzzy. And now when I go to do this, um, actually I'm going to do this real eh, I'm about the right color. And I'm just going to kind of... Just go like this. It's important. Don't just go click and drag like this because it doesn't. It changes every time you draw a new stroke. Not, um, and I'm just kind of pittering, pattering, pittering, pattering. Hopefully, it's. If I hold Alt and click, you'll see. See how much. Oh, see, turned off again. How are you turning off? There we go. So I'm just pittering, pattering. And what that's going to do, because, you know, if you look at that grass, it's not just one pure solid color. That's why whenever you see a colorized image, they look terrible because there's no variation in it. So this is a big thing we do in 3D animation when we create textures and stuff. Uh, and I'm going to show you this in a second when we do the, the, the person. So I'm just going to kind of go like that, right? And I'm just going to go ahead and turn everything back on. And you're going to see it's going to look... You probably can't tell so much now, but it, I should have kept the old one. But you'll notice it actually does look considerably better. Um, and so I might do that to the trees as well, just because uh, organic things obviously have lots of variation. Um, and you might, you know, be able to employ that a little bit. But obviously these are kind of superficially colored, so, um, you know, it's unnatural. Now the skin is the other thing. So um, a lot of times with the skin, uh, I'm going to go ahead and put a layer actually above the skin up here and I'm not going to use this color dynamics. Instead what I'm going to do is try to be real particular about it. So control plus plus I'm going to keep my fuzzy brush and what I'm going to do is go down here and what you will notice is um, wherever there are capillaries, wherever the, the you know veins are transferring blood to, from artery or from arter, veins to arteries um, you will notice that it'll be red, right? Because um, the blood has to be more towards the surface and it's spreading around the actual tissue itself. Um, so typically like fingertips, you know, palms will be pink, the nose, you know, maybe the brow around the chin, things that basically are protruding out there, you know, the ear, ears, right, that are more towards the tip will actually have a, a sort of more saturated um, orangey red kind of feel to them. So kind of like this color here. So a, a general rosiness. So I'm going to add this to everything, and I'm going to take my opacity down and my flow. I didn't end up having to do it on the other one because I was going to paint like randomly, but then I decided to do that multi-stroke thing. So, but this one we actually do need to do this. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a lot smaller, and then I'm just going to brush this red. Maybe make this opacity a bit stronger. Yeah. Um, around, and try to add. Know, a little bit of variation it needs to be a little bit stronger. So not, oh, you know what? Also, let's use this on her skin here. Like elbows typically will have it a little bit more. Holding space bar and clicking and dragging. So again, fingertips. You know, her knees would also have that. Now, um, oh, make sure I'm in color mode too. That would probably help. Okay. So, just making sure, adding those various things. Obviously, the lips, right? Oops, didn't mean to do that. Somehow I grab. Ah, what is going on? There it goes. Jeez. Okay. So, I'm just going to keep drawing on her lips here until they get pinker. Um, uh, let's just go all the way up because it's not giving me, it's not, it's better to generally be a little bit more subtle with this. Definitely eyes. Okay. Like that. And then you'll see more of a greenish bluish color in the, um, this I'm actually going to put quite a bit lower in, um, other areas, uh, basically where the blood isn't flowing quite as high. 
So I'm going to put a little bit up on her forehead here. That was a little too much. Come on. So I'll take that opacity down a whole bunch more. Maybe a little bit in here. Down in here. Okay. Get around the legs in here. Okay. So, and then maybe I'll put like a little bit of yellow in this area. Now, this seems kind of weird, but honestly, even if you did this wrong, even if you weren't putting um, these in the right spots, it will still look better than if you just did pure one um, color. So I'm going to do a little bit of green. Um, you should call this like just doing rainbow puke. So I'm just kind of pittering, pattering this around because if you were to look at skin, look at your arm, you will notice that there are a million colors flowing through it. It's not just one solid color. So I'm just going to kind of pitter patter. And a good example of this actually, let me show you. Let me see if I can find it. Um, oops. So um, pop this over here. So there's a thing where they you do yellow up here, and then kind of red, and then kind of blue. And you can see it in like famous paintings, so like you see it here, where it's a little bit more yellow, red, and then blue. Um, again here, yellow, red, and then blue. Um, so you, um, but anyway, so that, that's basically what, what you end up doing. Um, and it, it, they talk about it in famous paintings and things like that too. But more than anything else, just it, you can look at. I mean, you can look at your skin. You can see there's just variation in it. And so the key to basically making a black and white photo not look um, absolutely terrible is uh, just putting that variation in. So um, you know, a little bit of yellow, red, and then um, usually a little bit of blue. Obviously, it kind of depends because if you're like a, a dude, right? Usually we have quite a bit of like five o'clock shadow so it's very blue um obviously she's a little girl so it's not gonna be quite as strong um but yeah so that's basically what i want you to do is colorize a person this is gonna be one part of your assignment um sort of like this now you can do it any way you want honestly i don't really care so much the manner that you do it i would suggest doing it in this layered approach because it allows you to kind of adjust it so even you could literally paint like the skin blue and then afterwards just do a hue adjustment if it's easier to kind of lay it out, do the hue adjustment on it and you can just fix it that way. That way you don't have to be perfect with the colors initially. Okay, so uh, let's see what this looks like. So this was, I'm gonna click on this guy and here I'll put this in a folder and then quite a bit off. So you can see there's a lot more variation of like coolness and stuff like that. So if you have the actual photo, I would just set that next to you and then you can kind of use it to both sample from for your colors and also just to see how close you are and see how close you can get it. All right. Um, all right. So we'll call that good with this one. Sorry, this video is a little bit long, uh, but hopefully you get an idea of what to do. Good luck.